Greetings fellow men, servus Männer, this is Red Pill Germany again. And today I want to ask the question, how did we end up here? How did we get stuck in this position where it seems that our governments always spend more than the taxpayer is able to provide and where the taxes have to rise and the debt has to rise and the birth rate is declining. So how did we end up in this stagnant, horrible, decadent position? So people say that humans are cowards in the face of happiness. What does that mean? So I think it means that when you have no external threat, when you are perfectly safe and your belly is full and all your enemies are dead or far away, we're not just happy. You know, we're just not enjoying our victory and we don't enjoy our happiness, you know. We make problems. We make our own problems. Because I think we evolved in an environment that where food was always scarce, where there was always danger. I think our brain needs that. Especially women are known for creating their own drama if they don't have inherent problems in their life. That is true and that's true for men also. We just can't stand a situation where everything is just fine. We tamed fire, we chopped down trees, we built villages, we built farms, then we created ships and we forged steel and um, later we uh, discovered steam power, the internal combustion engine, the transistor, the laser and so on. You get my point I think. So we created a powerful civilization that doesn't need to fear any sort of external threat anymore. So the only threat that remained was we ourselves. And so men became wolves to men. And I'm not referring to classical warfare because I think there is less conflict and less war relatively now in the world than there used to be. I mean that our Western civilization become, became so productive and so strong that we created an, an environment where there is no more real scarcity, at least not like there used to be. So then we can afford to feed the poor and we can afford to be sentimental about weaker, unproductive parts of society. And generally that is a good thing. That is the weird thing about our situation now. Charity is a good thing. I don't want to say charity is futile, charity is stupid. It is a really good Christian thing to do and I would never suggest otherwise. It is just a problem when the so-called welfare class that we have now is growing faster and reproducing faster than the productive class of people. That creates a situation where they become dependent on our tax money and they scream for more and more of it and there comes a point when the producing people become less and less and the people who are actually paying into the system become less and less and the grievance class and the welfare class the class of the dependent weak become more numerous at some point there has to be a situation where all these hungry mouths cannot be fed any longer no matter how we increase our productivity. I mean, we have fully mechanized agriculture these days. We have car factories where hardly any people work in anymore and most of the cars are produced by robots in really high-tech factories in the West. So no matter how much we increase our productivity, we will not be able to feed all these people who are basically not contributing anything to um, the production process. May that be uh, the production of infrastructure, of food, of technology or any such useful tangible things. And when I say grievance and welfare class and unproductive people, I don't want to bash on unemployed people. I also and I especially mean people with master's degrees and PhDs for example. A lot of those folks also don't really contribute to society and no one would be worse off if they were just gone. And once again, I'm not making moral statements here. I don't hate these people. I'm just saying that the system like it is now and how it's evolving cannot be sustained for long. 
I'm not arguing to put anyone in camps, so stop building strawmans, <laughs> okay? Don't even start to build your strawmans. I'm not advocating for any of those gruesome things. I'm just merely saying that mathematically speaking, our system is not sustainable. So to many people, this seems like a chicken or egg problem. Like, why do we have all these social justice warriors? Why do we have these minority activists? Why do we have all this... Um, group think why do we have all this so my personal experience is that people who grew up in a household where um, at least one of the parents was employed in the private sector or had to work really hard for his income uh, normally these people tend to think differently I know from personal experience that it is mostly the sons and daughters of uh, teachers or of other government workers who become extreme social justice warriors. So couldn't this cultural shift in the West just be due to the fact that less and less people are actually working in the productive sector, that less and less people are actually employed in the private sector and we have more and more government workers? And the increase of the um, government's part of the entire wealth of a civilization is just due to the fact that uh, the very successful Western civilization had the feeling that they can afford it, that there is no reason to be that competitive anymore because we don't have any enemies anymore, that we can afford this charity, that we can afford our sentimentality and that we can just give because we have. So what you end up with then is you have a whole class of people, an ever-growing class of people that could not make it in the real world. They're not used to operating on a limited budget. They're not used to competing. You know, if they need more money, they apply for it. If they need more money, they just raise the taxes. If they need more money, they campaign for it and they bully and they shame and they scream. None of them would start to work harder or work longer hours if they wanted to have more money. No. So I find it really interesting that Aaron Clary, he devised this Clary test. It's basically three questions. A. Have you ever worked in the private sector? B. Do you have rich parents? C. Did you graduate with a worthless crap degree? So these three questions make up the Clary test. And I think that all our politicians in Germany at this moment would fail the Clary test. So they would all be worthless pieces of garbage according to Aaron Clary. And I can't help but kind of agree. They're basically people who could never compete in the private sector, never compete in the real world. If the zombie apocalypse would be upon us tomorrow, they would be dead the day after tomorrow. And have you ever asked yourselves why these uh, zombie apocalypse movies and uh, TV dramas like The Walking Dead are so successful at the moment? Have you ever asked yourself that question? So I think that either some really smart guy in the media realized that a lot of people out there either see that the collapse is coming or they have a gut feeling at least or and this is more conspiracy theory now <laughs> all these zombie programs could actually be installed for a reason to kind of mentally prepare the public for what's ahead be that as it may I see the zombie apocalypse scenario as um, symbolic it is basically an analogy and it should show us what happens if civilization breaks down. And it is actually Terence Pop who uses um, uh, Zombie Apocalypse as a title for a continued video series of his where he discusses what would happen in the case of a large-scale terrorist attack or if uh, all the inmates would break out of prison and wage war on the public or infrastructure, the grid and everything breaks down and it's every man and woman for themselves. Basically a zombie apocalypse kind of uh, end of day scenario. So I think that all this um, political correctness and all the nanny big government state and um, cultural Marxism, the, the lefties, the feminists, the Black Lives Matter idiots and all this, these are just symptoms I think. 
This is a class of people who cannot compete and they know or feel that they cannot compete and um, when uh, hardworking people are saying that we pay enough taxes already, well, they fear for their lives. They have no other option but to make us feel guilty. They just don't have any other skills. So to them, it would actually mean that we want to let them starve. They feel threatened. And this is why they viciously attack people who are for limited government, for lower taxes, for more um, equality of opportunity than equality of outcomes, for less uh, redistribution of wealth and income, and um, for no affirmative action laws, for example. They actually feel threatened, and they realistically, I mean, they should feel threatened, because they are just weak. They either don't have the IQ, or the motivation, or the willpower, or the strength, I don't know, they, they just don't have it. And I think when you grew up that way, and when you're uh, beyond a certain age, I think it's really hard to get your act together and all of a sudden become a productive human being. That doesn't happen overnight. So I don't care if this is nature or nurture. I don't care if this is a gene or if it's a cultural meme that is acquired by uh, environment and experience and just growing up under these conditions. I don't even care in the end. All that matters is that it is a pattern in society that is um, reproducing, that is procreating, literally. And it is so funny how people in the US and people in Europe are playing the game of who is fucked more. Like people in America say, oh, with the migrants now, Europe is so fucked, you're so fucked. And uh, we always say, well, at least we don't have all these millions and millions of Mexicans and black people and ooh, and all the guns that they have and all the crime and the violence and the homeless people who are just out on the street. And I mean, we also paint a very dark and bleak picture of the U.S. that is in some cases justified. I lived there and um, it is much safer still in European cities than in American cities. But um, if you listen to what people say in the media, then um, Americans think that Europe is really much more dangerous at the moment as an inner city in the States, which is just not true. So I don't really want to engage into that game who is fucked up more or uh, on which side of the Atlantic the end is closer and who has five minutes more time before our societies go down the toilet because our problems are similar and I think um, we are almost the same level of fucked. Um, it's really hard to say and it's regionally diverse so it's hard to say where we are worse off on aggregate the US or Europe. All I can say is our problems are fairly similar and remarkably identical I would almost say. And also the solutions by the way. Because um, you see a group of people on both continents who say that they had enough. And uh, we will see and hear a lot more of those people where in the United States, where maybe uh, democracy is still a little more healthy than in old Europe, um, Donald Trump actually became the candidate of the GOP, even if he's nothing like a Republican. Um, in Europe, that didn't work. In none of the European countries, this worked. So what the Europeans did um, in order to bypass their corrupt party system frustrated conservative or libertarian leaning people I should say there are not many real libertarians but I would say more conservative free market thinking kind of people they left the centrist Christian democratic parties and they actually founded new parties and these parties are the European equivalent of um, what the supporters of Trump are in the United States now. So even though I'm not a supporter of any party in particular, I would just say that if we want to turn shit around and if we want to have a last chance maybe to avoid the really big crash, which might be World War Three or just full-scale civil war or something like the zombie apocalypse actually, then we probably should give these new movements or these new parties a chance. At least check out their programs and check out their candidates. I am a skeptic and I am pretty pessimistic generally when it comes to human nature, but what do we have to lose? I mean, if we go on with the old parties, 
we know exactly how it ends. I mean, everyone who knows a little bit of mathematics knows how this will end. These were my two cents for today. Um, thanks for stopping by. Hope to catch you guys again soon. And have a good day. Servus, Kameraden.